Hola, beautiful beings of light. Maria here from Shamanic Soul Sisters, Branches of Vibrational Healing. We are finally back for our 18th podcast episode. Hello, everyone. I wish you could have just seen the way Maria winked at me because she is winking to all of you. (laughs) I hope everyone is enjoying their summer so far. This is Samantha here, and today we're going to talk about the crown chakra and it is the seventh chakra that lays above or on top of our head and it is all about consciousness so let's get conscious yeah oh i love it (laughs) let's get conscious (laughs) love it haven't you guys missed us we've been on a little hiatus for the last few weeks but we are back And yes, today's episode kind of closes up our series on the seven main chakras or energy centers of the body. Um, So I'm just going to dive right in and as I did in the previous episodes, give you a little list of signs that you have a balanced crown chakra. Um, So number one, you rarely suffer from headaches. What I will say about that is when your crown is starting to really open up and you're allowing yourself to really become connected or in tune with it, you will feel headaches. So that's very Mm -hmm. normal, kind of in the beginning. And not always just headaches, but tingling sensations. You can almost feel like there's something kind of like hovering above your head, um, almost like electric, you know, activity going on as you start to open your crown. As it's balanced, it's um, it says that basically you rarely suffer from headaches. And I can attest to that. I'm somebody that used to suffer from migraines and cluster headaches. Um, and since I've really worked on balancing my crown, I've noticed that those have significantly dissipated. Um, so I am oh. proof of that. <laughs> now that you mentioned that, same here. I used to not even be able to really wear headbands. And now since I've same. become more more aware of the different layers of my consciousness like my head doesn't hurt I can wear hats again wow oh my god the hats too yeah (laughs) that's wild you say that because I've been wearing hats a lot like this last year and you're right Um, like I never used to be able to wear my hair up for a long time because I'd get a headache like all mm -hmm. I couldn't wear stuff like you're saying on top of my head because it would be like too much pressure oh it's wild yeah we just we just woke each other up to another layer of self-awareness there, didn't Would you we? Look at that. <laughs> Becoming more conscious by the by the moment. I love it. <laughs> so yeah. If you have a headache now because your crown is busting open, just just work with it, deal with it, know that it will pass. This actually reminds me of one of my clients from a couple of years ago, um, who I'm now very close friends with. She came to me. Um, actually at a psychic fair and was told by another practitioner that she was being psychically attacked and she was having Mm. all these headaches. When I connected, it wasn't that at all. It was actually the opposite. It was that your crown is actually opening. And it was interesting because once I told her that, the headaches dissipated. So it was like she had this belief because somebody else told her you're being psychically attacked that it was actually amplifying the headaches and making them more... Um, more persistent and as soon as I delivered the message from higher states of consciousness source it was like oh no no no. like you're not being attacked like literally your crown is busting open right now and from that moment on she had a massive shift it was like the headaches were almost gone so it's wild which is proof about our beliefs and Mm -hmm. yeah which we will definitely dive into yes Mm -hmm. we will um all right number two you can have a conversation without taking things personal. I love that because really when your crown is balanced and really connected with it, you are beyond the egoic mind, right? The, the egoic conditioned mind. So you don't, when you're in conversations with people, you don't take things serious. Like you don't, not that you don't take things seriously, but you don't take it personally, right? You don't get defensive because it's just, you're just in this sort of state of awareness and Sam and I were talking about this before we jumped on, how this this kind of 
um, little tidbit was dropped into my awareness like last week when I was doing a coaching session with somebody about, you know, what does it mean to be self-aware? What is consciousness? What is awareness? All that good stuff, right? And she was talking about how she's very self-aware. And a lot of people feel that they're very self-aware, but it was like, it was, no, she's judgmental of self. So she's aware of certain traits or characteristics about herself, but she has judgment around it. She has shame, guilt, right? Like most of us. And it's like, that's not self-awareness. That's just being judgmental of self. Because awareness, is it, it's just awareness. It's its like being the truly the observer, right? And I know for me, when I connect with source, when I'm doing sessions for people, and that is my intent, is to connect with that higher state of consciousness, it's like the way the information comes in, it's just information. It's just an awareness of things, but there's no opinion about it. There's no judgment. There's not even like an emotion around it. It's a very just like neutral, like, hey, this is what this is. Hey, this is what this is. Hey, this is what this is, right? So that's kind of, it was a, it was a good way for me to explain to her and bring to her awareness. No, when you're judging yourself, when you have a harsh opinion of yourself, like that's not being self-aware. That's literally being judgmental of self, which again is all driven from the ego. So I love this little, you can have a conversation without taking it personally, because again, awareness lives outside of the egoic structure of the mind. Um, and yeah, sorry, ahead. but have you heard of the four agreements? Yeah, I love that book. So the second agreement is don't take anything personal. Love it. Yeah. And I was literally just reading this about last that. night. Yeah. Whoa, weird. I know. And that's why I had to like turn around and get it because like now I'm on the third agreement so yesterday was the person personal one and I was like that literally shifts you into observer so you're not living in this moment of all the time of like so they just said that to me why am I feeling some type of way oh I'm, ta I'm literally taking it personal right and then once you say to yourself dude Sam you're taking it personal it's like oh the energy goes away and you're like oh. exactly oh that's the awareness because that's the awareness it's like oh you're taking something personally right yes. it's not judging it's just like hey you're taking this like you're getting you're feeling defensive and it's like oh i am oh okay well let yeah. me shift to that and it just kind of like naturally happens i love mm -hmm. that example because it's true it's like whenever we feel the need to defend or we are taking it personal when you even think of the word the ego is part of the person, right? The ego is part of the human construct of the mind. So if we're taking things personally, it's because our ego is being triggered in some way. If we're just allowing information to come through and have an awareness of it, and it like it's just kind of cycling through, that's, that's just being aware of things. That's tapping into more consciousness than having this perspective of opinion and judgment and criticism and all that good stuff. Um, number three, you can see yourself without forming negative judgments. Boom. Just talk about that. <laughs> number four, your senses are sharp, but you are not oversensitive. And I like this because I think you and I have talked about being sensitive and this kind of just goes off of what we were just talking about. I believe that there is being sensitive to energy, meaning you feel are and are aware of and in tune to energy, right? You feel it in your body or you just have this knowing of energies. Being overly sensitive in terms of how this is talking about it, I feel like they're talking about your ego being oversensitive, being defensive, right? So your senses are super sharp when you're connected with your crown. But again, you're not taking things personally, right? So you're not oversensitive from that egoic standpoint, because I do think that there's a little bit of a difference when we're talking about being too sensitive, people being sensitive, being us sensitive, right? I've learned for me, it's like, if I'm overly emotional about something, I can discern if it's ego coming in and I'm taking it personally. I'm being oversensitive right now because there is an aspect of my ego that's being triggered, right? versus just being empathic and feeling everybody's everything. I don't have a judgment around it. It's just like, whoa, I'm feeling, I'm feeling their shit right now. Isn't that interesting? It's being the observer of it, right? It's like, yeah, because I'm very, in, my senses are so sharp. My extra, whatever they call extra sensory senses are like so um, in tune, right? So it's like, yeah, I feel everything. I have an awareness of 
of all the realities, but I don't have an opinion about it. There's no judgment. It's just very like neutral, but I can feel it. <laughs> and example. that's interesting because I didn't know that that was, well, like, it makes sense actually because the, the central nervous system is controlled by the crown and your right. central nervous system is what controls your senses, right? Like right. how you're taking things in, how you're not. Yeah, it's all clicking. Isn't yeah. it? It's wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we know this, but like, wow. Yeah. Wow. And now they're deeper understanding. Yeah. Like, so let's just take for example, okay? We both put crowns on our head. Back in the day, probably even just a year ago, if I had a crown on my head that weighed or put had like little like, oh my God, you know those claw clips yes. in the back of your head? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I actually just started being able to wear them again. I'm like, wow, this is actually com- like, wow. I could never do it before. But if you put a crown on your head, think of the weight that is. And it's like, oh, right. And then eventually you're just, it's heavy. There's pressure. It doesn't yep. feel good. So that's just sending signals to your whole body that you're just like in like, fuck this. Like, this is not comfortable. Yep. Versus you find what's comfortable for you. You don't put anything on your head. You're able to just have the information soar, like come in. Mm-hmm. Like there's no static. There's no. Right. Yeah. It's literally just like, flowing it's flowing there i love it no static yeah <laughs> i love it sorry i keep interrupting you i'm just having oh no you're like, fine <laughs> no that's why i kind of like sharing these because it does it's like oh wait a second that does relate <laughs> totally <laughs> um number five go. <laughs> number five is you feel inspired often definitely if your crown is binging and open and balanced your your interests are shifting all the time right but you're feeling inspired like to to keep going to create really um six you're open to new ideas which i feel like goes hand in hand with feeling inspired seven you can receive guidance that's big because really and we'll just go there now sam and i were talking about it how We're always receiving guidance, okay, from our higher self, from source, creator, divine, whatever word you resonate with, from these higher states of consciousness. We're always connected to our higher self. We are. It doesn't go anywhere. Our soul doesn't go anywhere. It's eternal, right? But we've probably talked about in other episodes about how the human, the human part of us, the ego part, gets stuck in a sense in its own trauma, in its own guck. So it convinces the human that, oh, you're disconnected. You're disconnected from source. You're not receiving guidance. Where are your guides? Like all of that, right? We're never not connected. But the belief that you're blocked or that you're not connected will create that as your reality. And Sam Sam and I have both experienced that with a plethora of clients. And Sam, maybe you even want to share what you just shared with me about how you're literally working through that limiting belief with somebody right now. Yeah. And I love how you just said connected, connected, because right before this session, I was working with a different client uh, where I was like, connection is connection. Right. It doesn't matter if it's to a physical being or if it's the sand to the water, because her whole thing was about like, I want, I want direction. I want to become more grounded. But it, when we broke it down, it was connection with self to feel safe within within self and feel connected to self and she's going on a vacation for a couple of weeks and I'm like I can't wait till August to see you girl like if you need direction and to feel connected like we gotta connect <laughs> so I was like you know what when you're on vacation I want you to set the intention to connect with the sand to connect with the water let the water cleanse any energy within you and she's like I love that connection is connection I'm like right because you are, you believe that you're not already grounded. You believe you're already not connected, but you are. So in order to strengthen that, you have to intentionally connect. You have right. to. Right. 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 Just like working out, like in order to get progress or stronger muscles, you have to put in the work. Yep. So anyways, so I just had to share no, that. I love that. It's like you <laughs> have to make the choice to believe that you are. That's really yeah. what it comes down to. That's how... <laughs> I'm able to tap into all of this stuff, right? Like I've done an insane amount of inner work and continue to, but it really has come down to choice and trusting that what the information that's coming in is legit. Like I have to trust it. So it's like, I have to choose to believe that I'm connected 
to allow myself to receive the information that has always been flooding through this avatar from the time I entered the earth plane, right? It's never not been coming through me, but Mm -hmm. the belief and then everything in society that has taught us not to believe in ourselves, literally, we've been taught the complete opposite. All of those limiting beliefs of this 3D matrix is what's blocking us, but it's an illusion. It's literally an illusion of, of disbelief. It's wild. It is an illusion yeah. of disbelief. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, crown chakras wow. open, people. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. So one of my clients, I won't say her name, but she's a veterinarian, and she came to me because she was just um, really wanting to work through. At the time, she didn't know that they were limiting beliefs, but you know, lack of confidence in self. She didn't believe she was connected to source, anything like that but she just knew something needed to shift within her. Like, that's why she came. She didn't know what, but she knew something and that's enough, right? Like that's enough. And so I've been working with her since I think January. I don't know. Um, But whatever, time's an illusion. So (laughs) that's my saying. Um, (laughs) She, we've been working a lot on like different beliefs that she's had. And one of the things she really wants to do and what came in in the first session was like, she's a strong animal communicator. I mean, that's why she's also in, in being a vet because that's the bridge to her purpose, like her higher, higher purpose with working with animals. So anyways, so last week she literally comes to me and she's like, so yeah, I was sick. I had laryngitis. I had this, I couldn't talk. Like I was pissed off about it, blah, blah, blah. Then I got this astrology reading and I'm ready to go. I am open and I'm ready to go. I, I'm supposed to listen to you. I'm ready to go. And I was like, see, sometimes we just need another person to be like, tell you what exactly someone who you've been working with is telling you, right? Yeah. So we both giggled. And then she, I was like, so what do you want to do? And she's like, whatever you want to do. I was like, what do you want to do? And she goes, I want to communicate with animals. So I had her do a reading for me and she was nervous as shit, but she hit it out of the ballpark. Like her crown was on fire to her it, she allowed herself to express whatever was coming in because I held that safe space for her but also like she began to believe in her she realized I am connected and that was the biggest part it wasn't it wasn't all of the work we've been doing that's just part of it it was finally she was like I'm tired of the belief that I can't do it that I'm ready to be curious about the fact that maybe maybe just maybe I can do it and she effing did it and I was like a proud mama, I, I like, like, I was like, oh my God. And she, and I was like, celebrate. Cause that makes her uncomfortable too. So like, I'm like, let's celebrate, let's celebrate. And she was so happy. And like, that's why Maria and I do the shit we do because it's like that, that's healing. That's living. Like that's feeling alive by pushing past your belief that you re- once you realize that's not even your freaking belief, like that belief came at some point you can see past that that's seen past the veil really you can Legit. see past the veil right Legit. and be like i'm curious what is on the other side of that veil? what is on the other side of that door there's a doorknob on that for a reason right like any door anything can be broken down once you believe and once you feel that you're ready for it all you have to know is that there's you have this feeling that there's something more and that is enough Yep. That there's something more. Yep. And trust it. That's it. Trust it. Just trust it. And, and, you know, it's funny because last week, spirit, higher consciousness, whatever you want to call it, um, (laughs) broke down the word belief for me. And when you actually break it apart, B, B. like B-E, lie, like L-I-E and then Mm -hmm. F, right? So it's beliefs are literally people they're just a belief right it's not the end all be all truth there it it's a belief that either we've personally created based off of our experiences or based off of programming of the matrix or people in our lives but we attach to our beliefs and then that creates the reality so that's why sam and i are always really trying to help people first identify what their limiting beliefs are And how can we create new beliefs? And I know for me personally, I continue to work at not becoming attached to every new belief I create. Because every day I seem to create or become aware of like new theories, new beliefs, right? But it's like, I'm not going to attach to this as the end all be all because 
in my connection with these higher states of consciousness, with source, with creator, I'm shown that there is limitless, multiple potentials and realities. They're all true, right? So it's like, how can I start choosing beliefs that empower me versus disempower me, right? But not, not, a, not becoming so attached that now I stunt my own evolutionary growth because if I, you know, if I'm dropped things into my awareness and now I believe that, right, because I've experienced it, it's like, well, now I believe this new belief that I didn't yesterday. But tomorrow, it could be something totally different, right? So it's like, okay, I have an awareness of it. Okay, I have an awareness that that's a potential reality or that is um, something that is playing out or could play out. But I know it's not the end all be all. And that's really what I mean about getting attached to our beliefs. It's that we hold them to be true. And they're really not. They're just a belief. It's just like thoughts are just thoughts. Emotions are just emotions. They're byproducts of our experiences. But when you look at the word belief, be a lie, right? Like, but yet we're so attached to those beliefs and we continue to create it. And just like the belief that we're blocked. I've met so many people since my awakening um, over the years that have that belief that oh, I was told I was blocked. I was told this is blocked, right? And a lot of times it does come from practitioners. I'll be honest with you. There mm -hmm. are practitioners that, that deliver that information and it's like, I know the way source has me deliver that and it's not, oh, you're, you're blocked. That chakra is blocked, right? Like those okay. words never come out of this mouth when I'm channeling, right? It's, that's not how, it's like you have energies in this chakra that need to be worked through, right? But it's mm -hmm. never you are blocked because that belief alone is literally what causes the human to feel disconnected from its higher self. The part that literally it doesn't go anywhere. It's always part of us, right? But as the human goes through life, it's very easy to get caught up in the trauma and the pain and the suffering, right? So it's like, I'm disconnected. My guides aren't talking to me. They're not, they're not dropping me any signs. And it's like, they're always freaking dropping us signs. But you have yep. to switch. You have to start becoming aware that you're limiting your belief system with that thought pattern. And that alone, Correct. once you almost become aware of that, a lot of times it dissipates it. it it's wild. It's wild. Mm -hmm. You just need one circumstance that disproves that belief. Exactly. That's all you need. Exactly. That's what I call little miracles. So that's I like. I feel like miracles are happening twenty four seven. If time was a real thing, like I feel like they're happening all the time. Mm -hmm. We just have to be open to receive them. We have to stay like the entire time since we started talking recording. I just keep hearing the word interesting, interesting to start looking at things as that's interesting, right? That way you stop taking it personal. Yes. Interesting is this, right? Interesting, I feel like is the same as curiosity. Yes. But it's, I feel like they have different energies back behind them, right? Like, so if you're super intellectual, you're always in your thought, you're very analytical, you're very, right? I feel like curiosity is like, ooh, I don't, that's, that's a danger zone, right? And then you got interesting, you can kind of vibe more with interest in, yes. right? Yes. So it's about staying, staying interested in things, like keep the learning process, process going. And you had said something very potent earlier where I got a major download and I won't go deep into it because that's totally needs to be another episode. But um, when you said the evolutionary belief, if you think about evolution, right? And then you said be why we are no longer taught how to just be and to live curious to live with interesting eyes and interesting heart we are literally taught like this is what you need for this and then for this you need this you need this you need this mm -hmm. which all it does is break down our evolutionary progress in the energy of being and that's what the healthcare systems are doing that's what a lot of the systems in place are doing are stopping us from being in the energy of curiosity and interesting. They're bringing in these quote unquote antidotes to make you think there's something wrong with you because you are interested in something. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't do that without this, without this. And that's medicine. Like I was telling Maria that last night I had major girl cramps. I was in so much pain. 
And I was like, nope, I'm not taking Tylenol. I hate Tylenol. Like it does not. And I was like, F it. Give me the Tylenol. Like, <laughs> and it wasn't because I had, like, I knew that I shouldn't have taken it. But at the same time, I was just like, I'm going to take it. But I know that I don't have to continue to take it. Mm-hmm. But I just need one to help me with this pain so I can at least sleep because I have a long day and work my hot packs. But I knew that that wasn't my only, right? Like that's, that's, that's a belief, right? And if you think about the world society in its whole, humans are meant to evolve, but what's going on, whether you want to believe this or not, you can sit with however you want it to, the stuff that the systems and the government and the healthcare systems are wanting us to always digest and take in is hindering our evolutionary process. So it's causing us to believe that we're not our own medicine. The more we believe that our medicine is outside of ourselves, the crown chakra shuts down. You literally become desensitized. You become like the freaking walking dead, basically. Like you're like, da, da, da. Mm-hmm. Right. And I meant the show, not like you walk around dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but in a sense, you Zombie-like. are because you don't. Feel, yeah. 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 And the more you believe that your power is outside of you. Yeah. The more you do kind of energetically become blocked. But that's your own. It's because someone gave you that belief and you ran with it rather than yep. being like, hmm, I'm curious. I wonder if there's another belief where like I actually feel like I'm connected because if that person can be connected, that person can leave their job and turn their life around. Why can't I? Correct. Hmm. Correct. Right? Absolutely. And I love what you talked about. So basically, yeah, the system just creates limitations, mm-hmm. which is limiting beliefs, right? That's all the system is always doing. They, they dress it up and make it look pretty like they're giving us options, but come on, they're not. They're literally they're giving <laughs> us limitations, mm-hmm. right? And again, when your crown is balanced, you see through that because it's like you see like oh i see what they're doing they have an agenda behind that yeah that that is a reality that that is a reality in a in a multiverse of multiple realities but i don't want to choose that as my reality just because they're t- they're telling me it's like so right it's 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 really saying to yourself oh that's interesting oh that's interesting what they're doing. That's interesting. But yeah, I'm going to choose a belief that's way more empowering, that's limitless, right? This is why Sam and I call our sessions limitless. And that has literally just spilled over into our lives, right? That, that idea of limitless. That means limitless, people. That means no limitation, no end-all, be-all, no one truth, no one one way, right? It's limitless but that's a very challenging concept for the human to really embody in a game that has taught us limitations right that's to me what the 3d matrix is is that it's it's an entire limiting belief system it's what it is and then we attach to it we believe it and then as a collective the more people that believe that belief we see it in the physical reality right so i believe that we are all experiencing multiple different realities while also playing, while also kind of watching a collective reality play out at the same time. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah. Um, So yeah, that, that was all, that was number seven. You can receive guidance really. Um, (laughs) Oh, seven to heaven. Yeah. Oh. (laughs) And And then the other two kind of all go hand in hand, right? So eight is you accept and adapt to changes easily. Again, because you're just allowing awareness to flow in and you're allowing yourself to just be, as Sam was saying before, like literally just being means just being. It means connecting with all that is and inner and understanding it's all energy and your energy and like, all right, I'm just gonna be and observe and then as a conscious human, choose what reality I wanna create now for myself in this physical reality. Um, And then the last one, which goes with something you were saying earlier, is you like learning, right? You like to learn when your crown is, is balanced because you recognize that there is this quantum, limitless 
field of information. So it's like, oh, I want more of that. So you're open mm-hmm. to just how you're open to receiving guidance. You're also open to learning, right? It's like, to me, learning is just us really remembering what our soul already has an awareness of. It knows. But to the human, it's like, oh my God, I'm learning all this new stuff, right? But it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. no, you're you're just, you're listening now to the guidance that's always been dropping in as seedlings your whole life. But because of and, every everything in society that really distracts us from it, that's really what it is. It's society is just a big distraction from that continual um, source of information that's always flowing through us. So, um, Which I feel is wisdom. It is. It's, it's wisdom. And where does wisdom come from? Experience, right? Like life experience. That's where, to me, where wisdom comes from. I could sit here and read books and learn all these great concepts from other people's experience. But to me, like the true wisdom of life is like actually experiencing life and allowing ourselves to be connected to everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So that kind of just goes into real quickly, I'll share what's on our website FAQs page. I did a breakdown of the seven chakras for people. And um, this, this is a good little just tidbit of the crown chakra. So as we said, it's the seventh chakra at the very top of the head resting on your crown. It is nothing but pure consciousness connecting you to the universe. Um, it's quite literally nothing personal, right? So it, it's outside of the ego. Um, when it comes to the concept of the crown chakra, it's something that we all have in common. Every human, animal, plant, ecosystem, planet, star has the same life force energy, right? Because it all on some level has come from one single source. So it all has that life force energy in it. Um, And it's also worth noting that this chakra exists beyond your unique ego. It is your connection to God, divine source, creator, whatever you deem that to be. Um, So yeah, we're always connected people, but it's just a matter of first allowing yourself to believe that and trust that. And I kid you not, that is when information floods in without you even trying to tap in. I know Mm -hmm. for me, and I'm sure Sam can relate, you know, as I really started allowing myself to tap in or when I do sessions for clients where it's like, let me tap in, right? Like it used to be very like, very intentional. Like I had like a way of doing it. And now it's just like, you know, like I'm already, I'm I'm always tapped in. I'm always tapped Because yeah. once you believe that, I think it's funny I'm saying believe after the whole thing's about beliefs. Um, once you believe that you are one with everything, you can, it's like, it, like Maria said, the information just comes. Like you don't have to second guess it. But when we start to second guess it, I feel like that's when the ego comes in, mm-hmm. right? There's like, wait, hold on. So the ego is either coming in to be like, hey, what you're about to share, just kind of shift how you're going to say it because the other person, how they're going to receive it. Or it's like, hey, they don't need to know this or you're questioning it. You're questioning your, your, your connection right now. So it's like, it's interesting. And a balanced chakra is basically like the unification of God and your human personality. We are all given a personality because of who raises us. Like it comes right down to that whatever family we're born into, whatever friends we hang out with, whatever school system we're in, whatever, 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 whatever we eat, it all affects our human personality. So we're here for this. And this has like been something huge for the last like month, like another layer of like, just experience life, like all, all of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And because my personality, I think we all have like a major like archetype or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's shaped literally by our surroundings. And then once I've realized, okay, yes, I am. I can be very bitchy. Sometimes I can be very strong willed. I can be stubborn. I can be calm. I can be all the things I want to be. Right. But what time in what situation is this, this personality part meant to be pulled in the most right for to, for whatever. But, in order to really stand in your power, your part, your empowerment and feel connected, it's to know that you are just like the person in front of you. You are just like that group of people that maybe when you were younger, you used to make fun of or like judge or criticize or be like, they're better than me. You're also that, 
right? Once you realize that they're also a piece of creator, they're also that, and let's not forget earth, this planet that we live on or whatever planet you live on, whatever galaxy, that is also an aspect of you. And once you realize that you can easily understand the guidance that's coming in. Yep. Do you want to believe in it? Do you want to trust it? Eh, it depends, right? <laughs> right. But it's knowing that you're one with them. It's the union of yes. them. Yes. And I got to say something because the last few episodes, I've mentioned things about my dad. So it only seems right. Because yesterday or the day before, so this weekend I went to a fair in Danvers. Every time I'm about to do something, I that puts me out there still I get I don't really want to do it but then I go and Maria's like told you to be fine um (laughs) but anyways so I had I only had four people it wasn't like a lot of traffic but each one was just as powerful and I was sharing with my dad which I haven't shared a lot with him about my sessions I've just learned boundaries with things but I felt I just felt safe and I wanted to share. And he said to me, he goes, you really know how to be connected, don't you? And I was like, thanks. And he goes, no, I've seen, I've seen your progress. He goes, you've, you put in the work and this is something he's never shared, but I was like, something I needed to hear. Right. Because I listened to higher self being like, it's safe to share with dad. It's safe. This is something like, and I I didn't know why, right? But I just trusted it. So when I shared with him a story about mediumship and I shared with him, like I'm I'm always a little nervous still about mediumship readings because there's this label on it and I put too much pressure on that word, but it's clear. Like it comes in, the messages are like, it's so clear. And he goes, what scares you about the mediumship? And I said, because I don't want to let people down. He goes, well, how could you let people down if you're fully connected? And I'm like, wow, is my dad like Buddha right now? (laughs) I was like, huh, you're right. And then I was thinking, he's like, so tell me the story. So I did. And he's just like, see all of the work you've done. You you know that you're connected. You help people connect. And if they don't want to listen to you or if you didn't deliver what, what exactly what they wanted, that has nothing to do with you. Correct. And then he said, the thing is you, you believe in yourself and that is your medicine because you help other people believe in that. And I was like, who am I sitting next to right now? And he goes, I wish I recorded the first reading you ever did for me. And I was like, Whoa. Oh yeah. And he goes, because I must admit, I actually got scared after you said a lot of things there's no way you would have known and you mentioned how my uncle smoked and me poking him poking me with the cane like there's no way you would have known that it scared me so I just didn't remember anything else you said I should have recorded it Mm -hmm. and my dad was one of the first people I ever read for all the power to you sister (laughs) right it's not easy to read for family people let me tell you (laughs) I I don't recommend it no um especially when you're tuning into your gifts it's very challenging but we choose our family just like we choose this avatar we choose our personality we choose if we're gonna take everything personally or if we're gonna be like okay i hear what they just said am i gonna let it disempower me or am i gonna try and be better as in learn more as in tweak how i say things right am i gonna keep on going and learn to be more connected or am i gonna say that i'm blocked and end it right Mm -hmm. But the, I don't, so what was that four or five years since I read for him? And so it took that long, but it doesn't matter because time's an illusion. And I just was like, holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. Right. Perfect example of planting seeds, right? Mm-hmm. We talk about planting seeds of awareness. And that's kind of what this is all about. So you plant the seed, just like how our higher self is constantly planting seeds of awareness for us all the time. And it's sometimes it takes. 50 seeds sometimes it takes 250 seeds sometimes it takes one Mm -hmm. right it's all a matter of where we're at consciously and are we open to receiving those seeds 
Are we open to change? All the things I just listed, are we open to constantly evolving and shifting and shifting our beliefs, right? That's, that's what keeps your crown open. That's what keeps it balanced. It's, it's really being open, allowing yourself to, to believe in all of that. Um, so yeah, that's, I love that story about your dad. See, look at that. All those planted seeds, all those planted seeds. I know it felt great. I was like sitting there and I'm like, Oh my God, this feels like, yes, this is another layer of connection. Right. But so I don't know if me and Maria have talked about this before, but mediumship is something that we both have. I don't want to say we struggled with, but we recognize that we hold this word mediumship on a pedestal until we don't anymore because we looked at it we're both like why do we have this weird energy about it and it's because of how we were taught it it didn't always sit well with us and how it was taught um but even just the label of it and because we're both like we're already spirit and if everything is spirit like it, it just whatever like the whole thing didn't make sense but the more instead of us being like all right universe don't send us any don't send us mediumship <laughs> We were like, all right, we want to learn because that's what we do with everything. We want to learn. We stay intrigued. Ooh, that's another word. Uh, we stay intrigued. Intrigued, interest. And think of the words in, in. Yeah. Going in. in. Oh, in. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. you know me, how I capitalize that in all my posts. And I'm like, I'm yeah. seeing the word. I'm like, oh, in. I am. Look at that. Go I'd in. be capitalizing that if I was typing it right now. <laughs> Capital N. Here we go. <laughs> interest. Intrigued. Yeah, legit. <laughs> we should make a hat connected in. No, wait, never mind. We'll think of that. <laughs> um, I don't even know where I was going with that. Where was I going um, with, that? with the mediumship, you were just saying oh, yeah. how instead of like being like, okay, we, we are aware that we have limiting beliefs around our capability of doing this. Yes. I know. I feel like for me, I know why now. <laughs> um, I feel like because our awarenesses because we did trust from I won't say the get-go of of our journey of this but we surrendered pretty quickly yes which allowed us to connect with our gifts in linear time from some people's like quickly right but it took work <laughs> like we had to do the work and again it took a matter of believing in ourselves, as your dad said and trusting mm -hmm. trusting I feel like for me mediumship it's it has sort of a linear limited kind of construct to it yes and when I, I connect <laughs> when I connect with source it's like no there's more than just that one soul right so for instance we have one well mm, we're podcast. gonna go into the many layers of consciousness right now because that is the crown chakra. It so is. real quick, because I'm reading Maria's mind. We not only have the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious, <laughs> we have many layers and plethoras of each. Correct. Because we don't just exist on this dimension in this Correct. linear time. Correct. So we're gonna break open your crown. So if you have a headband on or a hat, maybe take it off or strap it on tighter so you don't go for a crazy rot when we blow some fire underneath your asses and really send you some love. Here we go. Wisdom time. Let's Here go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so as humans, we live in this 3D construct of limitations, as we've talked about, right? Linear, limited, it's illusion of space and time. So we think Maria Jingris is just Maria Jingris, and when this avatar dies, only my one soul comes and connects with like a medium, right? To talk to their loved ones. No, friends, our <laughs> souls are multidimensional. So as I've recognized in my own awareness and evolution, my soul is in many different avatars. My soul is living many different realities, right? So when this body dies, it's just this body that dies, that ex exits this physical reality. But my soul is still in multiple other realities, multiple other dimensions. So I feel like for me with mediumship, there's this belief that that person that died has one soul, one part of them that can only come and talk to like one person at a time. Because I've had a lot of people ask this before. Well, if my loved one is always around me, like how are they how are they getting to be with everybody else too, right? Because again, that's a very human 
tiny, tiny, tiny lens. Like our souls see everything. That is that connection with higher consciousness. It sees all realities. That's what I'm talking about. So I feel like when it came to mediumship, anytime I experienced it in the past where I had mediumship readings, it was all like evidential. And they talk about how evidential mediumship, where you're literally proving to the person that it's their loved one you're pulling in, right? So it's like mm -hmm. there's something that you're delivering to that person in the reading that is evidential to them. Like they have my loved one. That's my loved one, right? And it's like, as my awareness expanded very rapidly, I'm like, yeah, that's your loved one, but your loved one's like 50 gajillion other places right now too. Like, it's like, I'm literally just connecting with, with the energy of your loved one, right? Like, we're like, oh my God, they're dropping in. No, they're always there. Like, they're, they're not, not there. Just like how we talked about our soul is not, not here. It's always here. <laughs> so I feel like with the mediumship thing, and I think that's why Akashic Records were very, quick for me to be able to do for people because it resonated with that multi-dimensional understanding of energy where it was like mediumship I'm like I have to bring in that one person and I have to bring it so it was like I was in my thinking mind I was in my ego because it was like just like Sam was I didn't want to get it wrong for people I wanted people to feel connected to their loved one I didn't I, I wanted to help them but it's like that belief was blocking me from just it's like Yo, it's all just yes. energy. You know how to tap into all of it. So like, just, just call in whatever it is that that loved one needs to bring forward for that person to bring them some sort of healing message. But yes, you are right. It's all the same thing when you're tapping into energy. So our loved ones, people, they, they reincarnate sooner than many of us think too. Like, after they die, and I've been shown this in multiple readings now, it started with a family member first yeah. for them to help me have, have an awareness of that reality. It had to happen like with somebody in the family first. But since that, it's like I've done so many readings for people where someone has died, the human part has died, and I'm already being shown, um, they're coming back in. Like they're, yeah. they're already back in your family, and they're like, what? It's like... Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's how crazy this is. I know. It's wild. Yeah. And that's what makes, that's what I, like having that experience always made me feel like this isn't how other mediums do it. So it made me feel like I'm wrong. Oh my God, I'm wrong. And it's like Correct. sources, like, no, you're just connected to all the realities. You, you have an inner standing because you've actually had, I almost feel like I've had near-death experiences without my body going through what people go through when they have a near-death experience but that that connection mm. with the oneness of all i feel like i've had that many times and so i have that it's not just an understanding of the concept i have a personal experience that i understand that there's multiple realities and there's multiple us's mm -hmm. yeah it's it's so it's so mind blowing when you really allow yourself to be interested in the different layers of consciousness. And like, when you set the intention to connect with your body or like, all right, what energy, like if someone tells you you're blocked, right? Ha be like, where am I body when I'm blocked? Have them show you in your body, point to you, tell you, Oh, in yes. your solar plexus blocked. Fine. Put your hand on your solar plexus and be like, what emotion is here? What belief is here? What age of me is here? What of me that is not pure, what, what is here for me to know? And allow that information to come in because boom, you dissolve that block, people. Like yep. it's what you yep. do because you go into that layer of your consciousness. And a lot of times this is going to blow some people's mind, mm -hmm. but it's since we're living on multiple uh, existences at once, there has been so many times where I have connected to my body or when I've been sick and I am shown me. And I think we've talked about this, but in another reality, going through some shit. And since I am the most consciously aware of time, space, connection, light, love, all this, I am the one to kind of go and experience that to send that version of me love to help us both evolve, evolve our beliefs, evolve our consciousness, evolve into another layer of health and medicine. And when I'm doing mediumship readings now, the loved ones are coming in and I'll, I'll just ask the person, give me their name. Cause like, I don't have time for this. Just give me their name. Yep. Because 
we have different names on each place, right? Like I, I'm not going to say your brother. Cause then sometimes I'm, I'm showing your brother in other lives who is now your husband. Like right. it's, it's wild. Right. So it is. that's what we mean about the different layers of consciousness. So um, now I'll just be like, okay, give me the person's name you want to see. And a lot of time the people are coming forth and not necessarily, yes, they show me memories, but now they're like, I need them as in the person living to stop doing this or to learn from me when I didn't do this, or I didn't allow myself to have more freedom, or I was always working to the grind that I didn't, I, I'd never stopped to like smell the flowers. Like they show me a lot of things of not necessarily a regret, but for the person who's living to begin to experience living more. And the person would be sitting in front of me and be like, oh, well, and I'm like, this is what they're showing me because they, they're learning from you because we're all consciousness. So we learn from everybody, whether we're dead on this reality or not, Correct. like we're always learning. And I will say this, if you have had someone pass who you deeply care about and you don't feel them, like you're like, I've been talking to them. I'm just blocked. I feel them. Well, either one, that person's soul is just kind of stuck and her spirit's kind of stuck and like wondering like if it's ready to evolve or not. Or something that I came across a couple of days ago was the the husband of this woman came forth and he was very, um, the energy was different. So her father came in who was like, whoa, like, yeah, I'm here to talk and blah. And then this man was very like subdued but I I set the intention to connect more with his emotional body that's what I did I was like I want to connect with his emotional body to see why he's not like the dad going wild because I also knew that's not how the dad was when he was alive so I was like something's up yeah but the the husband who passed was letting me know that he was holding on still to a lot of pain but telling me because his wife is still holding on to a lot of pain. His wife is still holding on to a lot of guilt Mm -hmm. around his passing. So I said to her, am I correct to say that you're holding on to a lot of guilt about him passing? And she started bawling her eyes out. And she said, yes, he um, overdosed and I was mad at him. And then he overdosed because we got in a motorcycle accident, like all this stuff started coming. Like she was, everything that I had said prior was now, clicking for her of why I was getting the symbols I was getting. But me sharing that with her, for her having a safe space to express that, yes, I have had this guilt. Yes, yes, yes. He all of a sudden got just as high a vibe as dad over there. Like he was like, oh my God, she sees it's okay. (sighs) So like, it was just so beautiful because she's like, I don't know. I was just drawn to you in this corner to come get a reading from you. I've never actually got a reading from anybody, but blah, 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 blah. And, and she comes to you first. And I love she it. comes to me. I always pop people's spiritual cherries. So I've been doing do. that lately too. It's like it's all these newbies and I'm like, oh yeah. boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's you fun. come to me who doesn't just do the typical, and I don't mean that in any sort of, yeah, we just do it yeah. our own way. Yeah. Yes. Very far out, far out, dude. Far and, out. But it was, he, he guided her to me, right. Or however that works. And it helped him release that lower energy he was still in. So he wasn't stuck. He was just letting me know she was in that energy and that's why she couldn't hear him, see him, feel him, sense him. Because, right, because she's in that lower consciousness, which is more of that fear-based, worried, sad, guilt, shame. So he came in with that same lower vibe in order to heal that from her because she walked away like ah, looking lighter. Like she looked lighter when she walked away, like she was floating to me and he was up then dancing with dad. And I was like, holy shit, look at that. Like I am a medium, right? Like, oh. <laughs> a medium, she said. But you have to be in, the, you have to empathize. You have to put yourself into the different energies Rather than saying you're blocked, like, why do I feel I'm blocked? Like, question that. Right. Question your emotion. As a practitioner, you know, 
and this is for anybody that listens that does, you know, is a practitioner, does stuff for clients, right? It's like you could have easily kind of been questioning all that. But if you were in your thinking your mind, you would have been like trying to figure it all out, right? Because like, it doesn't make sense. A lot of what gets channeled through from higher states doesn't make sense always to the ego, right? The ego wants to know why, 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 everything. It's why, 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 why. But it's that, that is a form of blocking us too, right? The mm-hmm. awareness doesn't need to know why. It doesn't need to prove itself. It doesn't, it's literally just existence. It's just like, boom, here it is, boom, here it is, boom, here it is, right? So when we're in session and stuff comes in sort of convoluted like that, right? If you're not the hollow bone, if you're not a clear channel, it can be easy to start like, and then reading the other person that that's sitting in front of you, like it's not resonating or that like it's not making sense to them, right? But that's where you and I, us trusting in being the hollow bone and trusting in those higher states of consciousness and being in our heart, it's like... I, This doesn't really have to make sense, but then once you release that needing to make sense, all of a sudden it's like, oh, it makes sense. I get it. I I get it. And I love that example because that is a perfect example of connection. That literally shows what we're talking about, union, connection with everything, every aspect of physical reality, non-physical reality, we're connected to all of it. So yes, our loved ones, when their physical body dies in this reality, they are still living and learning through us. That's oftentimes why we have contracts or agreements, we'll say, with people that they exit earlier in linear time than we do because it's part of an agreement. But yet they're learning through our journey. That's why I tell people the best way to honor your loved one's spirit is to Booking, live life, people. That's how you honor their spirit. You're still in the human avatar, right? And when I say live life, I mean embrace all of it, all of the pain, all of the joy, all of it. Because that is what I see a lot of souls when they leave the human reality. Like, oh, shit. I, I (laughs) I disconnected from the human experience most of the time because it's uncomfortable as fuck. And it's like, well, now I'll learn through my my tribe that is still walking in the physical reality. I'm going to learn through them. And guess what? I'm going to just fucking reincarnate right now because it's just so much fun. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> you know what? I just have to bring this in. I don't know how it relates, but it has to if it's coming in. So um, when Nico passed, uh, so over a year and a half ago almost, right? When he was passing, I saw the room open up with the angels come in the same way when, when Sandy passed my fiance's mom, like how I told you, right? Yep. Same way. And I saw the angels come in and like my version of angels, whatever, come in and help them. But I literally saw Nico then go through the wall in the vet room, go into this beautiful, there was no rainbow, right? I mean, not that I expected anything. But it was something more beautiful than then made me sad. But then, ma- but now I'm realizing like, oh my God, he just reincarnated mm-hmm. into another reality with me. But I'm a young girl. Like I'm literally, I saw the back of me and I was like, who's that, who's that fucking little girl with my dog? Like that's my first, because <laughs> oh, I was in wounding. Well, because right. I was in wounding, right? Of course, just you were breathing. Yeah, I was like, who's was this little girl that gets to have my Nico? Because I remember him <laughs> looking back at me and like waving but he's holding a little girl like the little girl's holding his hand as if Nico had like a hand up and you just said that and it was like I just saw that image again and I saw Nico like look back at me he's like I reincarnated into another dimension with you but younger so like I was like oh my god he goes for more more fun more play like I'm running again you just when you were just talking about that like I just saw I was like oh my god that's what that was Mm -hmm. like I knew that but I thought it was with another girl but it was with me right (laughs) But you also, ex- you accepted it too. You were like, all right, yeah. so he's bringing joy to some other little girl. That's, yeah. That yeah, little bitch. bitch. Yeah, little bitch. <laughs> but at the same time, like, good for her. Like, he's a great dog, you know? Yep. And if he can provide for her the amount of strength he gave to me, like, that's badass. And now I'm seeing that it was me on another <laughs> dimension. But, like, I don't think I, I'm obviously there to learn different lessons, but I feel like he, well, they're telling me right now, like, my parents are different. Like I'm learning different lessons there, right? right. Like I'm evolving differently there. I'm at, I'm at a higher frequency there as a kid. And he's with me like, cause I need the strength 
in that reality now. I and, love it. Wow. And that's, that's why people just <laughs> sort of standard mediumship isn't how we roll because it's like, yeah, I know that your loved one has more than just it's one linear soul that we think it has. I know that your loved one's soul is in multiple different dimensions, right? So that was, I realized that was my quote unquote block because I had an expectation of how mediumship was supposed to be done just based on how I had observed it over the years that I had mediumship readings done, right? So it was like, I don't do it like that. Like, so am I doing it wrong, right? That's ego. That's ego mm -hmm. being like, because away again, higher states of consciousness, it's like, there's no right or wrong. Like you just allow the information to flow in. You just allow it to flow in. And I know for me, like when I'm in session, um, whether it's doing a reading or a healing, not coaching, that's a little bit different because for me, when I'm coaching, I am the human personality, 100%. Like I am the human. I haven't set an intention to be a hollow bone. Like I'm, I'm the human, but I am also connected intuitively at the same time. It, but it feels, I feel different in sessions that I'm doing coaching versus when I'm really going into what I refer to as like trance, like channeling. The information comes so quickly. So I don't have time to be in my thinking mind. That's how I, that's why I trust it. It's like, and I always tell people when they sign on, you know, log on for a session, I'm like, and I think Sam and I talked about this. I'm like, a couple things, how my sessions go, like I'll close my eyes because it just helps me stay focused in my trance. I can do it with eyes open. I just, for me, I, I like to keep my eyes closed. I just find that it's like less distraction, less potential of my ego coming in because if I can, if my physical eyes see the person and they're like, you know, they're, they're fidgeting or they're like at this, like, like yeah. stoic look, like, yeah. <laughs> shit, right. Like that's going to get in my head and it will pull me out of trance. So, but when I'm in that trance, that channeling, it's like the information comes in so fast. The best way I can describe it is a flip book. And it's just like, and it's like clairvoyance, clairaudience, all the clairs, all, simultaneously happening because again it's that extrasensory perception it's beyond the physical perception of things so i i just trust like what's coming in it doesn't have to make sense to me and i have no expectation now to how the client receives it because i have set such a solid intention at the beginning of the session to be in my heart space to remove my ego to the side, to allow myself to be that clear channel so they can receive whatever it is their higher self. Their human self may not be ready, may not think it's ready, but I always set intention for their highest and best. So it's like I trust. And it's just funny because I, um, shortly before Sam and I logged in, I saw this thing come across and it just talks about how minuscule the human lens is and how we perceive the world. And it said, humans perceive 1% of the electromagnetic field, which is visible light. We perceive 1% people, 1% of it. The eyes can see anywhere from 430 to 770 terahertz, and the ears can hear between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. That's like nothing, right? So we, yes, we live in a physical world, so we rely on our physical senses. But source energy is beyond that. So it's really allowing yourself to be able to see beyond what your eyes see. Our eyes play tricks on us all the time because our eyes mm -hmm. are really just attached to the human ego. So it's like we're literally viewing our own life and the world through this tiny, 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 tiny hole. And literally spirit was like, tell people to pick up, you know, the thing that's in the middle of like a um, toilet roll or paper towel that that cylinder thing, right? Like hold that up and look through that. That's pretty much how the human perceives life in reality, right? It's like, oh, there's only one reality going on right now. And it's the one that I'm looking through in my tunnel vision. But when you're connected, when your crown is balanced, it's like, oh my God, there's multiple realities happening right now. Wow. Isn't no. this interesting? Isn't this interesting? Isn't this, interesting? Isn't this yeah. intriguing? I have actually no opinion about it. I just am observing that, holy shit, there's limitless potentials and realities happening right now. This is wild. So, and yeah. if our eye can only see 1% of EMFs, that's what you said, right? Yeah. yeah. Think about our cell phone, the computer. So I had the blue light glasses on because I've been getting headaches, yep. not because of my crown, but because I've been, I work by the computer. Um, but 
think of, so I have to be in nature because it gets rid of my headache like mm-hmm. that. But um, think about all of the EMF that comes from any electrical device, all of the poles out there, all of the, when you're on an airplane, that's all run by computer and everything. Our eye can only see that the light bulb's on, that the computer's right. on. We can't see all the waves that are coming out, going into our human nervous system, into our central nervous system, right? That's why it's so important to ground with nature, to know that you're always connected to source, to light, because that energy, that energy can heal all of the freaking static yep. that is in this system that we live in, this one reality that we live in. Right. And something before we end, you literally said, Claire, and I was just like going with my ADHD, beautiful, magical mind of why did they come up with the word Claire? What's so special about Claire? C-L-A-I-R. Why isn't it C-L-E-A-R? And then I'm like, wait, Claire crown when your crown is clear and balanced the information streams down that you can be clairvoyant claircognizant you can you can taste you can smell you can hear because you just know and you trust like so it's i it's i not c-l-e-a-r it's i like it's the all-seeing i i'm like holy shit isn't that interesting hmm (laughs) Because literally, yeah, the all-seeing eye sees all. It doesn't just focus on one narrative, one reality, that this is the end-all, be-all. It sees all of them. And for me, that's what makes me, my human self, feel very misunderstood in this dimension. Because Mm -hmm. I, I am very aware of all of the suffering and corruption and horrible things that happen to humanity in this reality 100 mm-hmm. percent. i've been given that awareness many times but i'm also equally as aware of all of the the other end of the duality of that all of the joy all of the bliss all of the healing that's happening all of the freedom that people are stepping into right so it's like yeah i'm very aware of all of the dark i'm very aware of all the light oh my god but it's all the same thing and it's just like so for my human self I still at times feel very misunderstood um, or misperceived by other yes. people because mm-hmm. it's like I am not ignorant. I'm like the opposite of that. I have so much of an awareness that it's like now I'm choosing to be a conscious human and choose where I focus my attention and intention because I know I, I, know I am creator. I know my beliefs will manifest in my physical reality. So I'm going to choose from the highest potential timelines to focus my energy towards, right? So it's wild being a multidimensional being. It's badass. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. It's very it interesting. Is. <laughs> I hope this podcast was intriguing to everybody and innovative and inspires you to connect more with all of your chakras with all of connection which is yes. earth fire water air me maria the dog the cat the bird the the electromagnetic frequencies like you're one with it all so nothing can actually hurt you when you know that like correct it's the ego that creates that illusion of separation so mm-hmm quick little hack for yourself. Start literally talking to everything. I've done that since I was a kid and I thought that was weird, but then I was like, oh my God, there intuitively was always this knowing that everything is energy, everything has consciousness and I am connected to all of it. Hence why I've literally always talked to inanimate objects. Like I've always talked to animals, yes, living things, but even like my house, like I've talked to things my whole life. So maybe start practicing that. And that will just help you to feel more connected to everything in the re- in in your reality because you you are connected to all of it. We're we're all connected to all of it, and just start telling yourself you're not blocked because none of us are blocked. We're not blocked. Yeah. If you we're believe you are, then you're gonna create that. But source energy is literally continuously flowing through us at all times. Our guides are always talking to us, right? Because this I know Sam and I have this a lot with clients that have almost like a really quick awakening and feel very connected, but then they start going through their human shit. And then all of a sudden it's like, I don't hear my guides anymore. They're not talking to me. It's like, no, you're just, 
you're actually just allowing yourself to feel into your human shit in a way that you've never felt. So your ego is creating this belief that now sor source is everything, people. That's the whole thing of it. So how could you not be connected if it's an aspect of everything that's been created? So there you go. <laughs> Literally. Hope your crowns Literally. are busted open now. <laughs> yep. Don't forget what brings you joy. Just right. don't. Allow whatever brings you a little glimpse of joy. Keep doing that every single day because that joy is your connection. Boom. So, we love you. Thanks for listening and see you on the other side of consciousness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> love you.